If you want to build a single arch bridge over a river or a harbour, how do you do it? You can't start in the middle and build outwards, you need to start at the edges, and there are two quite different methods from which you can choose. One of them is to start building out from one side like this, and then add temporary supports as you go. And if everything works out uh, correctly, you might be able to take them away after the bridge is completed. The second thing that you can do is to use temporary cables at each side. So you start building this half arch from this side, and you would add a cable to the side, and provided that's anchored to a very heavy weight, that half of the arch should stay there by itself, and you can keep adding bits to it. And if we do the same thing from the other side, and, and if we aim those two half arches correctly, they might eventually meet in the middle. And when they do, one thing remains to be done, and that's to join the two half arches together. And if our calculations are correct, at this point, we should now be able to remove the cables or cut through the cables and the whole thing stays where it is because the arch is a very strong structure indeed. At this point, the bearings on each side of the river are the critical things that hold it up. Now you might say, where has this actually happened in building a bridge? Very close by, right here at Sydney Harbour, where the bridge consists of an enormous arch going between the north and the south side of the harbour. The Sydney Harbour Bridge was built between 1926 and 1932 and it started with the two half arches or spans coming out from each side. They eventually met in the middle and were joined in 1930. Now until they were joined they depended very much on those supporting cables which were anchored securely to each side of the harbour. But once they were joined the critical points were now the bearings on each side of the arch. Because pretty well all the way to the bridge comes down to these points at the bearings, on this side and on the other. Why not simply bury the ends of the arch in the earth on either side? Well, that might work with a stone bridge, but it's not going to work with a steel one, especially a long steel one that gets very hot. Because as steel gets hot, it expands, it grows longer. And if you had the ends anchored in the dirt, two things might happen. Firstly, the bridge might get longer and push the size of the harbour apart, not awfully likely. So the sides of the harbour would stay there, the bridge getting longer between them would distort and twist, and you can't have that either. So that's the function of the bearings. They allow a certain amount of movement. As that bridge gets longer and shorter, getting hotter and colder, the top of it can go up and down a distance through about that, 18 centimetres. That's quite a bit of movement in a big bridge. And the bearings here allow the whole thing to flex. As the sides go like this, the bearings, like my elbows, allow the movement to happen. And they've been doing it very successfully for 50 years without any distortion, on this side and over on the other. That set of uh, stonework over there, the pylons, looks as if it supports the bridge, but it's a clever illusion. It's really just decoration. All the weight comes down to those bearings. Of course, bearings, arch, pylon, they're all there for one purpose, and that's to get the traffic across. The traffic is riding on the deck. That's actually slung from the arch on long steel straps. And these days, it takes an enormous amount of traffic in trains, cars, and pedestrians. So the next time you're in Sydney and you drive across the Sydney Harbour Bridge, you'll be one of those many millions who take advantage of this amazing structure that goes across the harbour. I'm